What's up everybody, it's Nasty Nate. Today, uh, the message is gonna be a little different for this Monday. So, my mission and, and what, I'm, what I'm here to set out to do is I wanna change your perspective. I don't, of course, you know, motivation and inspiration comes along with it, but I really wanna change your perspective on your life and I wanna inspire you guys not only to be successful in, you know, your financial, financial situation because I think that's the first thing that pops into everybody's head is like success is my financial situation but I really 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 want you to open up your eyes and change your perspective on what success is and I really want success to start being something that's multi-dimensional so a lot of us we you know we want to be successful and want to make a bunch of money and we want to have a lot of things but our family life is lacking or you know, our, our family members are struggling while we're thriving and, and we're flourishing and but we're leaving the people that we care about behind. And as much as you can be successful by yourself, it's humans need connection. Humans need connection. As much as we say that we don't, as much as as a man, as I used to say, you know, I don't need connection. Um, you know, I'm out, I'm out, you know, I'm doing my thing, I'm grinding. Um, you know, I don't need, I don't need any of that. I was seeking attention from women and and being with multiple women at all, all these times because I wanted that connection so instead of doing the hard things and putting the time and energy into building a connection I would get the connection for a few hours and that was enough and that was that high for a little bit but it wasn't enough and so today out of all the things that success can be, like I said, I want you guys to be well-rounded. And today I wanna to talk about love. I know that, you know, a lot of people look for me to be inspiring, look for me to be, you know, motivational, but the side of me that I don't really allow anyone to see that I really need to, to dig into, I wanna open up is that I'm, I'm a emotional, emotional, emotional person and I think that is what's beautiful about me. That is what's going to allow me to connect to so many people is the fact that I feel so many emotions. I can get into how you feel and I can help you and I can customize, you know, the way that I talk to you and the way that I, that I, um, uh, uh, portray uh, or, or, or say, you know, something that I'm trying to get across or get a point across. I can help you in a way that is custom to you because I can feel your emotion. I can I can sort of, you know, put myself where have I have I once been in your shoes? And so the month of December has always been hard for me the last three years because of the passing of my friend Zach. And so today um, I really just want to get emotional and I want to connect with what Zach was in my life and what purpose he was here to give me and what purpose I was here to give him. And so I, I'm, I had to go back to where everything kind of started for me. And so right now I'm in Longview. Um, people from Longview are gonna know this spot. I'm up at City View. Um, it's changed since we used to come here. None of this used to be here. None of these houses used to be here. This used to be a one drive going this way and we would come up here all the time. Um, Zach and I would come up here and we would, would drink and we would smoke weed and, and we would talk about our feelings. And Zach was the first person that I felt so comfortable digging into my demons and expressing how I was feeling with him. And so the more that I go back and the more that I think about it and the more that I try to, you know, find what was that purpose for him? What was that purpose for me in his life? And I think it was love. Like this dude, uh, really, really uh, taught me what love is like, I love this guy like nobody else as a friend that I had ever had ever loved. I did things for him because I knew he was hurting. 
I did things for this guy because I knew his story and I knew what he was going through and I knew what he was battling and all he wanted to do was escape that. And so I want to tell you today that love, when you tell somebody that you love them, you think it's about you because I love you. The second you say you love somebody, you give up you and it's about them. Love is serving without self-sacrifice. So you can make that person's life better. You can continue to, to help them grow into what they want to be in and what, and what is their purpose in life. It's not about you. And some of you are so selfish through your love. I love you. So when I do this, I should get something in return. When I service in love is doing something with zero expectation. And I, I, I had, I learned that from Zach. I learned that I could give to somebody with no expectation in return. I learned that, that you can, you can serve somebody and you can help them in, in every, every bit of what they're battling or every part of their goals or anything that they're dealing with. Like you helping them, that is love with zero expectation and to get nothing, nothing, nothing in return. I used to do so many things. I used to go out of my way. I used to drive back. One time Zach called me the night, the, the, the day before Thanksgiving and he said, hey bro, I wanna come home for Thanksgiving. I was like, oh, that's dope. Like, I, I can't wait to see you. He said, I need you to come get me. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, I need you to come get me. I'm like, dog, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. He's like, I know. I literally, without thinking, got in my car, drove to California with, with Ben Worthen. We were there in California. It was, it was, I can't remember what city it was in. It was a Simpson uh, college. I don't know what city it was in, but we drove eight and a half hours, almost nine hours to be in California for 30 minutes. And in true Zach fashion, he wasn't ready. He didn't have any of his stuff packed. And we turned around and came back home. Like, because that's what I did because I loved him. I knew that there was a possibility that he wouldn't do that for me, but I didn't care. I loved him. I was there because I loved him. I was there to serve him. And I really feel like he was the first person that I was able to do that. And the reason that he was in my life is because during the time that I was his friend, I would always tell him, dude, I don't think I can love a woman, bro. Like I'm incapable of loving, but the whole entire time I was loving this guy. Like everything that he was going through, I took it on as my own. During his drug addiction, during all his battles, during all his pains, I took it as my own. I stepped into him and I said, yo, the reason you're acting the way that you're acting is because you hurt so much, bro. Like you hurt so much and I just want to help you. And, and I always, and, and, and what he gave me in return is that when I loved him and I loved him and I loved him, he believed in me. Like, and that's why I loved him. The second that I was going through all my trauma, him and I would come up here and, and, and all the stuff I was putting myself through, him and I would come up here and we would write music. And, and, and we would go back and forth and we would listen to beats and we would just, and, and we just vibed out and I started writing music and not a lot of people know this except for some of the people that we used to kick it with and we used to write all these raps and then the second we would finish them, if we would, we would get in the car with different people, we'd turn on the instrumental, we'd go in. Like we would go to parties, we would cut the music and we'd turn on the instrumental. And I only did it a few times because at the time I was very, very afraid of, of performing in, like, or being in front of people just like I was with the speaking thing. But I'll never forget the first time I was at a party, it was at Sergio's house, shout out to Sergio. and. I did one of my songs and Zach was, he walked up behind me, he put his arm behind me and he said, Nate is Greenhouse's first artist. And I was like, yo, this guy believes in me. Like, that's what he gave me. He gave me 
that I could put my effort and creativity and my thoughts and my love and my emotions and my time into something and that it was paying back. And, and that's what a lot of us are afraid to do. When you step into being yourself, you're afraid that you're gonna get shut down. You're afraid, like I was embarrassed to hold the camera and to, and to be in front of people and to speak and to speak by emotions and tell people that I had thoughts of committing suicide and tell people that, that I went through all these battles when really I had nothing really going on in my life. I was just so afraid to be myself. I was afraid that my goals were so big that I was never ever going to be able to live up to them and I just wanted to, to give up. And in the fact that I could just be authentic and put myself out there in my feelings, and this dude believed in me, like that's what he gave me. He gave me that purpose. And that's what his purpose was to me, was to believe in me and, and to let me know like, yo, the thing that you think is impossible, you can do it. And that's what he gave to everybody. Like the reason that so many people were attracted to Zach is because we all want to believe in ourselves. We all want to believe that our biggest dreams of being who we're actually supposed to be can come true. And every single day he lived that. He lived that he was gonna be a rapper. He lived it and he, he believed. He believed that he was gonna make it. And everybody was envious of like, yo, this dude has this dream that almost seems impossible, but he's a little mad, he's a little gone to it. And he left that with me. Ever since then, I have always dreamt the biggest, biggest, biggest dreams. And it was because of him. And I just, I cannot thank this dude enough for giving me that and showing me what love was. So guys, the people that are in your life, you have to step outside of yourself. The last conversation I had with Zach was something that I regret so much. It was an ego versus ego conversation and we were battling and we were going back and forth. He was in the midst of his, his addiction and I was in the midst of my, my mess in my life after, after we had kind of gone separate ways. and if I could have just stepped outside of myself and not been someone that was selfish in, in, in my love, like my love had a condition at that point. I went from loving him unconditionally to coming into like this reality of like this harsh world and that, you know, people can hurt your feelings. And then all of a sudden my love had a condition and that was not a service to him that was a service to something that was damaging to both of us because I was feeding it and then I couldn't step outside of myself, outside of my emotions, inside of what I was feeling because when I say I love you, it's, it's no longer about me, it's about you and I could not do that at that time for him. And so the last conversation that we had was not an unconditional love, was not a love of service, it was not a conversation of service, wasn't what I could do better for him, it was how was this conversation going to benefit me? And that's all I cared about. And so with that, with his passing and with everything that he did for me, this is not something that I want people to go through. I do not want you to wake up and have a regret that you didn't love somebody, that you didn't give them everything you could because at the end of the day, like they, people always say, people will, never for, people will forget what you say, but people will never forget how you made them feel. That should be enough for you. That should be enough because you could lose somebody one day that is so important to you and you could be feeling how I'm feeling right now and you could not get a chance to say you're sorry. You could not get a chance to, to, to do a do-over. You could, so if today's your last day with somebody, love them unconditionally, serve them. Step outside of yourself and give them what they need. People project, when people act and people lash out, they're projecting what they feel inside. So when, when someone gets mad at you, instead of lashing out back or, or, or trying to challenge them or, or stand up and poke your chest out and beat, beat on it, like ask them what they're going through. Like, yo, how can I help you? How can I serve you? How can I love you right now that, that is going to help you 
face what you're battling and it's gonna help you help you get through what you're going through and so that we can we can move closer and that you can move closer to yourself and that you can move closer to the people around you and that we can all together we can we can all flourish and we can all grow because the demons that we're battling inside are not allowing us to grow and and that's what we all need we all want to be better we all want to change our lives we all want to grow so guys please 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 stop letting things that people say and people do that you love stop taking it personally and and step outside of yourself and love them how how you can love them and how they need to be loved and i'm gonna do this today for my guy because this is how i remember him and um when we were close and in the best connection that I ever had with this man was during this time. So today, I'm gonna take this for Loco at City View, where it all started, where the 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 foundation of Greenhouse and all the dreams and all the beliefs and and all everything came and started it was all right here. So. I'm gonna take this and we're gonna dump it out. I love you, my guy. GHP for life, LT. I love you, bro.